Hi, welcome back. Still on the same issue. Should INEC be dissolved or not? And it is no longer news witnessing what happened during the 2023 presidential election. Literally, everyone has lost all hope in INEC. Some want reform, while others want INEC to be scrapped. But this recent Edu governorship election has also sparked a lot of reactions. Now, PDP wants her to court to challenge the result as well as other opposition parties. But the deed is done already. But this man was invited to give account of what happened exactly. Little did he know traps have been set up for him. Kindly take a listen and let us know what you think about it in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates. Well, very quickly, should INEC be dissolved? We had the uh, Fedeco. We had the uh, NEC. Now INEC. At every time, the issue is about the lack of independence on the part of the electoral body in Nigeria, lack of uh, integrity, uh, lack of uh, effectiveness, despite attempts at electoral reform since uh, 1999 to date. So is the solution on the basis of the perceived irregularities in the Edo election, the dissolution of INEC and uh, the uh, uh, formulation, composition of a new body, electoral body, uh, maybe perhaps those who are proposing that will recommend that those who will manage that new body should be uh, imported uh, from Mars, uh, from Pluto, from outer space, so that Nigeria can have a proper electoral framework. Okay, I think the problem is not about the body. It is about the attitude of Nigerians to everything that we do. The laws are there. The processes are there. We are supposed to manage the processes. Everybody has a role. I have always said it, and I will continue to say it. Our problem is not the laws or the functionality of the laws. It is our own attitude towards doing things that we should do in the right manner, at the right time, and in the right place. You can dissolve the body, like you have said. You are not going to invite people from the mass, or from Cameroon, or from the Republic. They are Nigerians. The problem we have is a problem of attitudes. That space you occupy, what are you doing with it? Are you working for yourself or you are working for the interests of the people? And the people themselves, what is their attitude to holding leaders accountable and responsible in their responsibilities? We see job, we see things as not concerning us. We complain when we think that we have, we have been cheated, we, we have, uh, our policies and everything have been infringed upon. But all of us have a responsibility as Nigerians to do things in the right way, in the right manner, and at the right time. What were we doing? The processes were there. They were outlined. Everybody has a role to play. What role were, were, were uh, given to you? How did you play it? Either as an electorate, as an observer, as a pool official, as a security agent, did you do what you were supposed to do at the right time and in the right space? We see things and we let it go. And then when it has gone wrong, we'll come back and begin to accuse ourselves. Because what I'm seeing is accusing ourselves. Because all of us refuse to play the role we needed to do. Okay. So it's not about dissolving the body. It is about doing the right thing at the right time. All right, sure. So I'm going to use uh, your words. Uh, speaking of doing the right thing at the right time, at the right place, in the right way, did INEC and the INEC officials on duty during this election, did they do the right thing at the right time, at the right place, and in the right way? 
when we know that what is on IREV is different from what is, on, what is at the collation centers. When we know that the collation centers at some point were moved and relocated and people locked out and so forth. So my question to you is, in analyzing this just concluded election, did INEC and its officials do the right thing at the right time, in the right way, at the right place? Yes, they did. They did not do it in isolation of other agencies. The INEC officials are Nigerians. Those other agencies involved in the, in the conduct of the elections are Nigerians. What did we do as individuals, as patriotic Nigerians? The election was conducted. Results were uploaded to the IRF. Results were sent to the coalition centers. At the coalition center, there are supposed to be security agents, INEC officials, coalition officials, and representatives of the political parties. What did they do there? And I will give you an example when I was in Cross River State in active service with Mike Guinea, where party officials were asked to submit names of their agents. He submitted, and on the morning of the election, the candidate came and said he wants to change them, that they have been compromised. Is it INEC that compromised them? Is it the security agents that compromised them? Who compromised them? And didn't he know the people he was bringing? So INEC did his best. I'm not absolving them from certain mistakes. No. They did their best. But what did the other people who were there do? Okay, what so did the what coalition the agents do? Uh, I'm sorry what to did the political parties do? I'd just, I just like you to clarify. What are those mistakes that you're acknowledging that INEC made? Sometimes logistic problems can cause delay of sending materials at the right time. These people who are carrying these materials, most of them will get there and they run away. And to return the thing back to the collision center becomes a problem. These are the mistakes. And they are not mistakes that, they are not intentional mistakes caused by INEC. No, they are mistakes deliberately caused by other stakeholders in the electoral process. And like I used to say, and I continue to say it, Nigerians, all of us, we have a duty to protect the electoral process. Okay. Are we doing it? Okay. No, that's, that's the answer. OK. Uh, check this out. Please, just hear me out. Osita Chidoka posted something, and I'll read it to you. An INEC presiding officer, Remy, recorded 250 accredited voters and wrote 263, 11, 97, and 1 for various polling parties, totaling 372. Did not write the total in the Edo elections. I'll read another one for you. Agent Josephine accredited 213 voters out of 496 registered voters, but recorded 406 votes in Oshola Primary School in Wepa Ward, Officer Court East. Are these ones other stakeholders that did this? This is a polling unit. This is your INEC officers. Are this one other stakeholders INEC that did this? INEC officer, yes. He's a, a Nigerian stakeholder. He was not imported from the Republic. Uh -uh. He's a copper. But He's you, a stakeholder no, in But the you system. said just now that INEC no, can't be blamed. Just listen to me. Uh, I've given you two scenarios. So you no, are saying that, INEC yeah. should not be blamed. Is this not your INEC officer? No, no, that is not what I am saying. Get me clear, Mr. Rufai. Whoever does wrong should be punished according to the laws. The question is, when the security agents and the uh, political party agents saw it, what did they do? They have a right. The laws are there. The laws cannot implement itself. No, but they reported Nigerians this. Nigerians have to stand no, for the No, they reported right this. This was widely reported. reported. We reported to the authorities. We reported in the media. Yeah, not but said, nothing yeah. happened. That was why the PDP you people did wait. go to the you coalition reported. center to raise cases like this. But nothing happened. Nothing happened. Many cases no, like this were are, reported. No, nothing happened. No. 
listing, there are processes. There are processes to be followed. There is a review mechanism. Did they follow the review mechanism to the appropriate authority? As an it's not going to the press uh, to say it. As it's following the their, process. Has ANEC triggered their own review mechanism of the Edo elections? Has anybody gone to them to review it? Has INEC triggered their own with all the complaints that they are officially lodged? Have the INEC triggered no, any review no, mechanism? No. You can make com no, there are places you make complaints and they become right. There are places you make complaints and it doesn't get the, the attention it deserves. And the reason is because you do not take what belongs to A and give to B or take the one that belongs to B and give to A. The processes are there. The okay. methods Mr. are there. Mr. Undu. Do it in the proper fashion. And Mr. Undu, respond. let me ask you a simpler question. Yes, sir. Let me ask you a simpler question. Do. President Jonathan has been quoted in the papers today as saying that what a do election 2024 has proven is that technology alone cannot solve the issues with Nigerian elections. Do you agree with him? Because in a do state, they said beavers worked well, biometric uh, verification was very easy. You know, and despite that, we still had ballot snatching, ballot stuffing, ballot burning, vote trading, and all of that. And then the second issue, you uh, retired from INEC as director of security. Do you think it's fair uh, for any political party to say the election observers are making wrong uh, statements? I mean, don't election observers, whether local or international, have a, a free hand to make their observations and uh, report, as the Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room did and Yaga Africa did. Are there are limits from a security perspective for election observers? There are no limits. The only, the, the, there, there are no limits in election observation. They have their job cut out for them by law. And they are doing it. So if somebody says they are not supposed to do that, he has to prove it by giving us the relevant sections of the law that says they should not make their reports. What they are doing is in tandem with the objectives of election observation. They haven't done anything wrong. That's my perspective. Okay. And as for the statement of the ex-president, he's right. Nigerians need to ask themselves critical questions. Are we getting it right? Because here in this society where we live, when, it th when you think it favors you, when you think, that's my, that's my, uh, my, my word, when, uh, when anybody thinks that what he or she is doing favors him, there's nothing that is wrong with it. But when another person does it, it becomes a problem. We need ethical reorientation of all of us in this society. With due respect to the Arise team, I give it to them. They have been our conscience in this nation. And we ask them to continue to keep it up. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what people do. Do your own, because there's a day of reckoning. As a Christian, I know there's a day of reckoning when nobody will answer for you. All right, uh, Mr. Ndu, let's talk about INEC's role as an umpire, because uh, I've heard you making several calls for uh, the citizenry, the electorate, to get involved and do the right thing and so forth. Uh, but also just piggybacking off of uh, Dr. Abati's question, referring to the statement from uh, former President Goodluck Jonathan, that at the end of the day, uh, it's human beings that are operating this technology. So if INEC is appointed the umpire, and uh, you, as somebody who was once with this organization, is now appealing to the electorate to do, to do the right thing. My question is, who is the referee in this whole game? Because we can't watch a football match and expect the spectators to now come onto the, the football stadium, onto the soccer pitch, and start making the calls. The referee has to make the call. So why is it that INEC seems not to want to be in a position to be held responsible where CSOs, citizens, uh, even uh, politicians, are, are raising a red flag. 
Is it possible that INEC is a perfect organization? It's highly unlikely. So why are we not seeing a spirit of wanting to uh, do some, embark on some sort of uh, investigation and reform so that INEC can be restored as the electoral I umpire of great and high integrity? Thank you very much. I think this, the relationship between INEC and civil society organizations election observation duties has been a very robust one. INEC interfaces with civil society organizations. The civil society organizations knows and can confirm that they make certain observations and INEC takes it, discusses with them on ways forward and adopts it. That's the truth. That's the point I'm making. The going to the press is a different ball game. That's to enlighten Nigerians of what is going on. They should go a step further to also tell the society that there is no complaint they have taken to INEC. At least as at the time I was in service, there was no, there was no complaint that they took to INEC that they did not sit down to discuss <coughs> and their recommendations were taken and approved and used. Okay. So it's not a question of INEC not taking responsibility. They do. Okay. And I also want Nigerians to hold INEC as an institution responsible and accountable. And there are ways and means this can be done. Go and interface with them. INEC is not a magician that they can be everywhere at the same time. Okay. I'm not saying that they do not have some employees who are bad eggs. If you know those people, put them to the commission, and the commission will take appropriate action. They okay. are not shying away okay. from their responsibilities. OK. On the 21st of September, I'm giving you empirical facts now. INEC Nigeria verified Twitter handle at 21.32 GMT time said breaking news. The commission's attention has been drawn to an allegation of wrong figures entering into polling units a result sheet in an ongoing Edo State election. We have received this complaint. The commission will immediately investigate and act on it and deal with any problem infraction. We have not seen any response based on that. Let me also excite you this morning. Esako East, Okpela, Ido Sabo, total number of accredited voters, two, about, uh, total number of accredited voters, 250. APC alone got 263. Accredited voters was 250. I can continue if you don't want me to stop. Accredited voters 213. No, go ahead, go ahead. In because Esako East Wepa, Oshola Primary School. Accredited voters 213. PDP 52, APC 253. Accredited vote, total vote, valid vote 406. Accredited voters 213. Yeah, let me quickly Should interject and tell you that. Should I stop? The re the, no, stop. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me answer those more. ones first. Uh, go ahead. The coalition officer. No, I know you have more. I also, I also saw it. It's not only you. I also saw it. The coalition officer should have interrogated that result with the beavers. And the law simply says, if the total number of accredited voters is more, is less than the number, in fact, it should be less. The, the votes cast should not be more than that of the accredited voters. Once it is more, the coalition officer, who is a Nigerian citizen, who was employed by INEC, having interrogated that result with the beavers, should, as a matter of fact, cancel it. That's the truth. We are, not, we are not shying away from taking responsibilities. If he does it, what they need to do is to take it up with the commission. And the commission will review it. The commission, That's all. The commission said they were going I to agree. But the, these people on the, who are doing this job. As at 9 o'clock on the 21st of September. As at 9 o'clock, 21st of September, the commission I, said they have gotten all these complaints time, they're going to review, that, but nothing happened. Nothing happened. Th th thank you no, so much. Who, 
they should follow. No, no, they should follow it up. If they say they are going to review it, then they are reviewing it. Because they should follow it up. There are processes involved in it. All right. Uh, there are things that need to be checked. Mr. Lebari Samson Ndu, former INEC Director of Security, we thank you so much for your time and for your insight today. And we should